Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper bringing you a discussion about home food preservation methods from a vegan perspective. Specifically, we were talking in this video about dehydration and canning. It's not really like a versus video. They're not like competing with each other. But I will say being vegan, I think, puts a unique perspective on which one of these is the most valuable for our food preservation. And I'll go ahead and give you a spoiler just in case you don't feel like hanging around or you don't have a lot of time, which I can respect. Um, for me personally, if I could only choose one, it would be dehydration, hands down. It's almost not even really a competition for me because I am so sold on dehydration. But again, it's a uniquely vegan perspective. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about both of them and some certain categories and, you know, just get right into it. Um, so first of all, to get started, either one of these is actually pretty easy to get started with. You could source used equipment um, at a very low price, usually on places like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, or even one of your friends might have like a canner, for instance, that she'll let you borrow or he'll let you borrow, or they might have a dehydrator that they'll let you borrow um, or something like that. So usually it's, it's pretty easy to get started either way. But one thing I will say with canning, you do need actual canning jars in order to get started with your canning. You need something that's going to form a good seal, something that can survive pressure canning if you are doing pressure canning. And so you do need actual specific canning jars in order to get started. And those are not the easiest thing to find right now. So that might be a slight negative as far as canning, but of course that is only really because of the versatility of the jars and how, how much you use them. Like I'm using canning jars even in my dehydrating, but you don't have to. Um, I, I feel almost like jars are a necessity whether you're doing either one. So I'm not gonna consider that like a negative towards canning. But just as, as an FYI, you're not just sourcing a canner, you're gonna be sourcing jars for the canner. Whereas with dehydration, you could just be doing the dehydrator without having to get special jars for it. Um, and so yeah. So that's just to get started. Um, but let's go ahead and get into safety concerns. Um, so I, there's so many things to talk about specifically with canning that I'm not going to get very specific on the safety concerns of canning, except to very, very fast say that um, if you're canning low acid foods, things like beans and potatoes, um, vegetables, and even like lower acid fruits in certain instances, um, you will need a pressure canner. You have to can with pressure. You can't just use a boiling, a boiling water canner. The boiling water canner is great for things like high acid foods like pickles and jams. And that is just like a very basic overview of something that is actually a very complex and long winded subject. I'm not going to get too into it here. I will at some point maybe do like some, some like bullet points of things to really keep in mind. But number one, if you're using tested recipes, you should be fine and then don't tweak the recipes. So I would say I only recently learned, which is hilarious because I tend to follow stuff. So that's good. But for instance, you can't even switch the acid. So like if a recipe calls for vinegar, don't use apples or don't use like lemon juice instead or if, if a recipe calls actually I guess it would be more the other way if they call for lemon juice you can't use vinegar instead the acidity is a very important chemistry component of the recipe and a very important safety and so certain acids are less acidic than another acid and you could accidentally make your food unsafe to eat just by exchanging the acid so this is the kind of stuff i'm talking about with canning you, you have to be very careful with canning um i would say get yourself very familiar with the nchfp website which is a free website. You can find this entire book for free on there. It'll say, how do we can? And you can click on canning and it'll list all kinds of safety and amazing information for you. But then this book though is the fully printed version. It's only $8 on Amazon and I absolutely love having this in my hands. It's a lot easier to navigate as far as I'm concerned. And it just, you know, it has an index and it has all of that like initial safety information plus um, the how to's a little bit and like diagrams. It explains how important it is to know about your elevation, what headspace is, how to do, like it's just got everything in here. And while a lot of people really love the ball books, I think the ball books are okay, but this is the one that I would choose. If I could only have one canning book, 
this would be it. And also this actually gives you information for canning um, beans. So for instance, this is chickpeas in tomato sauce. It's a recipe out of this book. These are um, pinto beans in molasses sauce. Again, it's a recipe out of this book. It's almost like a baked bean recipe. I actually honestly haven't tried this one yet. I'm really eager to try it. Um, but yeah, this is a relatively new addition to my canning shelf. Um, and so it's got some really good recipes in here even um, that are vegan and that you would be able to focus on. But definitely knowing and understanding the fact that there are some pretty severe and serious safety precautions with canning in particular, you, just, yeah, just be careful. Okay, so if you're gonna start canning, I don't mean to like make you afraid to can, but it's like you can knowing that there is a reason for literally everything in every recipe. And so I'm definitely not a proponent of like rebel canning. I would stick to recipes personally. Um, and yeah, that's just what I'm gonna say about that. For dehydration, especially like considering that we are vegan, there's honestly not that much to worry about with dehydration. That's another reason I really love it. So especially if you're an oil-free vegan, if you're cooking oil-free, because the main thing with dehydration to learn or to know about is fat. Like fat will make your food go bad way faster. It'll take a food that would last you 20 years and make it last more like three or four months at room temperature. So it, it's like a very serious thing to include fat or not include fat. So every single thing that I dehydrate is 100% oil free. And at some point, I guess I know I need to do some videos showcasing how to cook oil free, especially if you're doing like sautés and things like that. It's actually very easy. If you look up water sauté, it just, yeah, it couldn't be easier. You just literally just use water instead. And in fact, I think a lot of times it turns out better. Um, but yeah, it's, I think a lot less scary to get into dehydration and especially, again, the, the major no-no foods with dehydration would be things like dairy and eggs, which we don't care about dehydrating anyway. And um, meats, you technically can dehydrate and turn into jerky, but again, they don't have a very long shelf life. Whereas, of course, if you were going to be pressure canning and canning and putting up a lot of like meats for your family, um, obviously canning would then be probably what you would want to go with instead. So again, that's where being vegan puts a unique perspective. It's like, well, I don't care about canning meat. So I, you know, I, again, I think dehydration is just a great thing. Um, so shelf life wise, um, technically speaking, if you look up technically, um, while you won't technically have a food that like goes bad in a jar as long as the seal is maintained, as long as proper um, procedures were followed with the canning itself in the beginning. Um, it technically won't like go bad ever, apparently. Um, but you will have a degradation of the food over time. So after two or three years, you're definitely going to start seeing some nutrient decline and all of that stuff. This is all stuff that has been measured before. Um, whereas with dehydrated food, you're looking usually at at least five years. And that's even like um, dehydrated fruits tend to be the ones that have the shortest shelf life as far as the vegan foods. Um, but for like things like vegetables and beans and dehydrated grains and things like that, you're looking at a shelf life of anywhere from 20 years to, to longer, especially your vegetables, like just plain vegetables. So you get a really long shelf life out of a dehydrated food. Um, and then just like safety wise, and also they retain their nutritional value. And then safety wise, again, it's, I guess it's not so scary. Like you don't have to pressure can to make sure you're killing botulism spores. Botulism isn't going to grow in dehydrated foods because of the fact that they are 100% free of moisture. Botulism requires moisture to grow. So that's another reason why dehydration is, is really safe. Um, and I think it's sort of easy. Again, it's kind of easier to get into, especially again, as a vegan, we're not even dehydrating any of the stuff that's like the red flag foods, as long as, again, you're leaving oil out of what you're cooking. Um, and then getting into, I think, creativity and versatility. <laughs> Honestly, again, I feel like dehydration wins in this because you have to be so careful about um, what it is you're actually putting into your jars. You're following tested recipes, again, because like acidity and, and all kinds of things that you have to think about to make sure that your canned goods are safe. You don't get a lot of versatility in your canning. Whereas with dehydration, you can dehydrate, like so for instance, this is just a 
a recipe that I make. It's it's my chana doll recipe. And again, it's all oil free and everything. And I just dehydrate that recipe. And now it's an instant form of this food, which just has all stuff that's perfectly safe to dehydrate in it already. Uh, because I, it's just, you just do. It's like, there's very little that's not very safe to dehydrate. Um, whereas with canning, like you can't dehydrate, you can't can broccoli, you can't can uh, cabbage, you can't can quinoa or pasta or rice or anything with like wheat or some sort of thickener in it, unless it's like clear gel for pie fillings. Um, now I will say um, to sort of throw canning a bone a little bit, they do have in this book uh, instructions for creating your own soup. So they have like, you can make your own soups. And so for instance, here is a can of my black bean green chili soup, which I adapted to canning by leaving out everything that you're not allowed to can. So that includes like onions and coconut, the coconut milk that normally goes in here and other stuff, but it has all of the safe to can ingredients in here, but you have to look at um, the canning preparation for each one of the ingredients you have. So it's a little bit more complex, but this is the last uh, jar of the soup. And I jarred this up in November of last year. So it's a little over six months old. Um, and it's doing just fine and we've enjoyed all of this soup and it's been great. Uh, and so I will go ahead and segue now really fast into convenience. So when it comes to convenience, I will say canning definitely wins over dehydration because you have something that's basically already done. You just like, like unseal the lid, dump it into your pan, and then you have something that you can eat usually pretty quick. Whereas with dehydration, you have to either, you're pouring water over it and waiting for it to rehydrate as more of an instant meal, or you can throw it in and you're cooking it to get it to rehydrate. So it takes maybe a little bit more time. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I would say convenience as far as finished product would go to canning, but convenience as far as making the product goes back to dehydration because it's you could just like take it like cook it and then like spread it on a tray so I have some dehydration videos and you can see how easy it is to toss something into the dehydrator and then you just walk away and then you come back and then when you put it into your jars like it's a very fast thing canning takes all day long man it's like it takes forever and then you get like 14 jars at the end of the day <laughs> it's like what like it's so much work but it does definitely make some really good food. So for instance, um, canned potatoes have to be my kids' favorite thing. Actually, all of us love canned potatoes. I, there's something about pressure canned potatoes. They're just silky and beautiful. They're so delicious. So there's definitely certain finished products that are just good. It's something about the pressure cooking makes them incredible. And also, as an FYI, specifically with potatoes, I find I don't like dehydrated potatoes really. Um, and so that is definitely one that I do in canning um, versus dehydration. So there's just, yeah, certain things that like what's worth it and what's not worth it. And you just sort of have to decide. Um, so for the space that something takes up, um, obviously home canning takes up a lot of space. The finished product uses up a lot of space, but again, you're getting something that's already pre-cooked and ready to go. So these beans were canned from my stash of, you know, dry beans. So now this puts it into a form that's just ready to go for us whenever we desire it. Um, but of course this takes up a lot more space than it does just sitting in the bag, <laughs> you know, so it's a jar and there's like head space. Like, so yeah, it takes up a lot more space. Um, and so that is definitely, um, not as convenient, but the fact that you're getting a finished food, I think kind of changes a little bit. So you'd be willing to use up a little bit more space because you're getting a finished food. But like, if you live in an apartment or a very, very small home, so like my home is not uh, tiny by any means, but it's also not massive. Like a lot of the homes that we have around here, um, our home is about 1200 square feet. And so it's still not like a massive home, especially for a family of five people. It's a three bedroom. One of the bedrooms is my pantry now. Um, and so uh, the boys share what, what, what used to be the living room is now their room that they share. Sage has her room. Adam and I have my room or our room. Adam and I have my room. <laughs> Is that a Freudian slip? Adam and I have our room. <laughs> and then this room is my studio. It's my business 
area and then my pantry now. I'm expanding into it because my pantry is about this big. So, um, you know, if you have space challenges, I, I feel like I have space challenges, but I know some people look at me and think they wish that they had this much space. And so I just try to be really grateful for what I have. Uh, but definitely if you're space challenged, I, dehydration is the way to go because this is like it it was so for instance here is some some pasta some brown rice pasta one pound of brown rice pasta it was six cups dry and then i cooked it then i dehydrated it and it's still six cups dry but now i have an instant food which probably is like why on earth would you go to the trouble of doing pasta but this is you know you pour boiling water over this and after a few minutes it's pasta again um, so this, it doesn't require nearly as much fuel or um, water to rehydrate. So which is something that potentially is great for kind of an emergency situation. If you're thinking more of an emergency situation or like camping or something, this requires less water at the point of eating it than cooking it from dried wood, if that makes sense. So technically, of course, it uses more water to cook it and then dehydrate it and then rehydrate it. <laughs> But like at the point, like when it matters, if you've taken it camping again or, or an emergency situation, you're losing using less water and less fuel. So that's why this kind of stuff is really handy to have on hand. Um, and then also, I guess specifically, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but when you're talking about something like canning or backpacking, you could carry this in a Mylar bag. You couldn't really chuck this into your backpack. You can't have glass jars of food in your backpack. So. Um, for a bug out bag type thing, um, evacuation type thing, not having to worry about breaking, um, jars breaking and things like that. I think dehydration might win again. Um, again, not that it's a competition. It's just sort of discussing kind of the possibility so you can kind of think about where you would use it versus not. <clears throat> so for the space, and also I wanted to mention this right here is three and a half cups of dehydrated broccoli. It was four pounds of frozen broccoli. It was a huge bag in my freezer from Costco. So again, if you have space challenges, dehydration is the way to go. It, it concentrates all of that into a very small form, which now, because I roasted it before I dehydrated it, and if you want dehydration to be more of an instant food, you have to cook it to the point that you want it to be cooked when it rehydrates, if that makes sense. So I didn't just toss frozen broccoli into my dehydrator, even though technically you could, I roasted it first. And then I cut it into small pieces after it was roasted, um, which also helps it to rehydrate better when you have smaller pieces. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Now you can also do beans. You can pressure cook beans and then dehydrate them. And you have something that you could just eat as a snack without ever having to actually cook it again. You don't have to cook it. I hear a lot of people kind of talk negative about dehydration because they say, oh, well, you have to cook it before you can eat it. And that's not true, actually. You can take your dried beans and again, pressure cooking because apparently they turn out better with pressure cooking versus just being on the stove. I haven't personally tried it. You can try it and let me know if you ever notice a difference. At some point I will try it, but I almost never just cook beans on the stove. I pretty much always pressure cook them because I have a pressure cooker um, and it's way faster that way. Um, but then you have a product, which is just like a crunchy snack actually, that you can just pop in your mouth and chew. Um, actually, you can just, just eat this too. Like you don't have to rehydrate any of this. Um, well, I'm not gonna say any of it. You probably would rather do the pasta. Yeah, it's so good. This is so good, guys. Um, <clears throat> you don't technically have to cook it. You can just eat it. So that's another kind of handy thing about dehydrating. Um, one thing I also wanted to talk about specifically being a vegan, and this is the last thing that I'm going to mention, and this is kind of an aha moment that I only just recently had. And so now this is informing my... Um, my thoughts and my direction moving forward specifically with both of these things because like I said I'm not going to stop doing canning just because dehydration is my favorite. Um, canning is still great like I said for having ready-made stuff and those those potatoes though. I mean yeah the, the potatoes. It's like, like how so much of this is just potatoes but it's for more reasons than just because we like it. It's because of the fact that this takes up so much space and this is so much work. Although I will say that beans are not nearly as much work as I thought they would be. Um, they are actually one of the lower labor 
canning items um, versus things like potatoes which you have to like peel and then soak in acid and then do all, you know, like all that stuff. Um, or freaking tomatoes. My gosh, tomatoes. Ugh, tomatoes. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to stick with tomato paste. I got to say, like tomato paste takes up so little room and you didn't have to do it. And there's so much tomato in there. I think it's way more worth it to just buy tomato paste than it is to go through the trouble of canning tomatoes unless you grow them yourself and you need a way to preserve them. But even that, I'm feeling like I will just move over to dehydration. <laughs> Actually, I have some jars of my homegrown tomatoes, which I just dehydrated. And this was back before I had a food mill and canning was way more trouble. So <clears throat> dehydration is even good for things like tomatoes. And actually they turn out amazing. I, I like to blend them into sauces, like in the blender and it turns oh so good. Anyway, it's like sun dried tomatoes basically only without the oil. So where was I? Oh yeah. My thoughts on canning versus dehydration. So because of the fact that canning does take up so much space and again, jars are so precious and I'm talking about stuff that I can have on hand for us that will be like a significant food source for us if we are ever in a situation where we really need to be eating from these stores, even though I, we're going to be eating this stuff. And then I have plenty of Tatler lids. So these guys, you know, they were just canned with their new lids, but then I'm going to be able to pop these open and then use Tatlers next time. And I actually personally love my Tatlers, by the way. Um, I don't have any issues with them. Like I said, this is a six month old seal and it's totally fine. Um, but I am probably only going to be canning higher calorie foods from now on. And so as a vegan, that means basically potatoes and beans. And I was thinking sweet potatoes too were kind of higher calorie. Um, and so it's something that is, is going to be utilizing that space for the maximum calorie return and then being able to save dehydration. But of course you can't even can broccoli, but so, but it's very similar. Like, like when you dehydrate vegetables, they take up so much less space. So for like vegetables and stuff, yeah, I'm going to be dehydrating them because it takes them and turns them into a smaller form rather than making them take more room up now, because now they're also in jars, <laughs> if that makes sense. So for me personally, moving forward, that's the decision that I am making. Um, and I'm still going to be dehydrating things like beans and the things that I cook, um, that are oil free and whatnot, but you know, moving forward, I'm definitely wanting to talk a lot more about that stuff. And so let me know down in the comments below for sure, if you're interested in more content specifically about canning or specifically about dehydration and, and kind of like, like, you know, I guess more content a little bit like this, but maybe with some more how to's and whatnot. But I did show this book for the canning and I will also show a great dehydrator book. So I really like this one. Um, and it has just basically information for how to dehydrate pretty much almost anything that you can think of. Um, and so this is a really great book also. Um, and I would recommend that one. But if you have any more questions or comments, or maybe you think I'm like 100% wrong in thinking that dehydration is better um, than canning, at least specifically, I, I would say just like specifically for vegans. And again, I don't know if better is the right word, but I just think like it makes a little bit more sense. Um, and you might think I'm totally off. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. Let's continue the discussion. And definitely if you have any thoughts or if you have any ideas specifically about foods, for instance, that are really higher in calories that are vegan, that could be canned, uh, let me know. Cause I'm kind of brainstorming right now for myself, um, on that. But yeah, man, those potatoes, you guys, if you haven't ever pressure canned some potatoes, you need to pressure can some potatoes. They are so good. Anyway, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. I'm definitely losing my light and my family needs some dinner. It's probably going to be this actually. A little bit of this. So we're going to try that out tonight and I will let you guys know actually how it goes. I'll like just put it on the screen and let you know, does this end up tasting like baked beans, which is what I'm hoping it ends up tasting like. You cannot find a vegan baked bean out there. Um, and I love the fact again too, that this has molasses in it. So that is even more minerals. And, and all that. So anyway, okay, that's it. I'm seriously going to say goodbye now. Um, but thank you so much for watching. And as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. See you guys next time. Bye.